Welcome to Shri's in a Circle. Welcome to another episode. In this video, I'd like to share with you all beautiful soul tribe here on YouTube about some of the very interesting moments that I experience during meditation and after meditation. So welcome, welcome. So Shri's in the circle because within your inner circle, when you're in this circle of light and love, this is where you will find the answers to your questions for you in this inner circle of calm and zenitude. I have participated and joined several meditation retreats, mostly Vipassana, mindfulness meditation retreats since I was 18 years old. And ever since, it has set this foundation for me to practice meditation throughout my life. That has been the best advice that I can give to anyone out there is if you have the opportunity to learn meditation, just please do it because you get so much benefit for yourself so much discoveries about yourself, so much inner healing that you can do for yourself. And you get a lot of strange insights, interesting insights as well, that um, the connection to oneness, the connection to the universe, and connection to divinity that comes with meditation as well. Because you're at this level of frequency that it's very hard to explain because it's not just a form, but it's beyond the form that high frequency beings like the devas, the angels, the, the brahmas, the gods, they can connect with you. And I'm not saying this just because I'm saying this because it comes from direct insight from a lot of dreams. And sometimes it's even happening in this here and now, like you just get this feeling that you're connected to a higher being. One of the most fascinating things that I, I get from meditation, and especially it happens after a retreat, because a retreat is pretty intensive. It's a 10 day often, a standard minimum days is 10 days for a Vipassana meditation retreat. And it feels like you've gone into a washing machine. <laughs> it's like your whole aura has gone into a washing machine for 10 days and you've been like in the grind, you come out of it feeling fresh, like fresh laundry. It, it, that's really the kind of feeling, if I have to put a metaphor or describe, that's how you feel. You feel very washed, very refreshed. It's better than any vacation. Because when you go for a vacation, you come back from a vacation needing another vacation to recuperate. But when you go for a retreat, you do a lot of internal washing and you come out just feeling like a brilliant, clean slate. It's just amazing. And you look amazing. You look radiant. It's also because you don't eat for like 10 days. So you also look super like you lost the weight. And it's a lot of internal work that purging that comes out. But I get a lot of dreams of flying after my dream, after meditations. Um, and even when I'm doing uh, meditations now in my daylight hours, you know, when I'm not in a retreat and if it's very intense, I tend to have dreams of flying. When you have dreams of flying, it tends to mean that your consciousness have attain to that level of very deep stillness that you feel like you're almost levitating. And so you feel that in your dream and that's a very good sign. It means that you have attained samadhi, which is concentration. It's a very high level of samadhi as well. So it's almost like a jhana level, you know, it's like you get these. But don't be too attached to that either. It's just a good sign that you're progressing, but don't be attached to it. So the moment you're attached to something, then that's the pitfall of your, <laughs> you're coming back down again. So just don't attach to anything. And if you feel really good in a meditation, at some points, you just feel like your whole body's gone. So you just feel like, oh, where am I? You know, it's like, you don't even feel your body. It's just so expensive and so huge. 
it's like you disappear. And that's when you feel a real connection to the oneness. And you're like, wow, this is Shangri-La. You know, this is bliss. Now, now I know what this means. And then the moment you're attached to that wonderful bliss, then you come back down to earth again, and back into your pain body. Um, but there are moments like this when you just go like, wow. You know, especially when you're... Your, our minds in the day-to-day -day are pretty cloudy with a lot of thoughts. When you're in a meditation a state of stillness, that separation comes about between the thoughts and the clarity of the mind, and you merge with the clarity of this mind space. You just feel very, very peaceful, and everything disappears. And that's when you merge into your wisdom mind, uh, and you feel like well, that's much more to life than what I thought it was, than just me and my body and my identity constructs. That's a whole lot more. And you feel so blissed out. You feel so happy, like you've never felt before. And, you know, and there's, it's completely free. It's completely accessible right here, right now. And I remember very poignantly I was in Thailand and it was a retreat with Jeff and um, Uda Marikita. Again, he's one of my you know, most favorite meditation teachers, <laughs> probably only one. And it was extremely hot summer months in Thailand. You know, it's so hot. We were, the, 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 the ground was baking and there were cracks everywhere. It was just super deliriously hot. And then I was in a lot of pain. I was in a lot of pain because, and also really interesting, I had a fight and an argument with my mom just before the retreat. And so it's as if karma was playing like big time payback in the retreat. I, um, I was very careful when I was walking. I was just like being very mindful. And it just had to happen that I slipped and I fell and I sprained my ankle. Even though I was very, very careful, it just had to happen. I knew this was karma. I knew this has got to do with the argument with my mom. And so karma was accelerated because I was doing meditation. So it's like, you know, you got to purge, right? So I knew that was related to my mom. And, and so, you know, I was hobbling. I was in a lot of pain. I couldn't bow. I couldn't sit doing sitting meditation. So I sat on a chair and I did sitting meditation, sitting on a chair and not on the floor, cross-legged. Then, after a couple of days of sheer pain, I had this brilliant moment of inspiration that I felt I was stronger than my body. So I knelt down. I was very excruciatingly pained. I knelt down and I said, I am stronger than the body. And I, the first bow was excruciatingly painful because my, my ankle was, you know, twisted and swollen. And I said, I'm going to bow. It was that he, amount of courage that I had within me and determination. The pain lasted for probably a few seconds and then it snapped. It was gone just like that. Miracle, miracle, miracle. It was just healed completely. And all that pain that I had been nurturing and attached to and feeling sorry for myself and all that, gone because I decided that the mind is stronger than the body. And that was it, completely cured. And so then I was in complete bliss. Uh, after that point onwards, I was like, whoa, it was massive. There was a lesson to be learned in that. And it's truly the mind over body. Then that evening, I was seated out. It was a, there was a pond, because it's a um, fish, fish farm. So I was seated out in the jetty overlooking the water. And there was this beautiful sunset. And I was looking at the sunset. I have to describe this to you. And I had not eaten. I was just eating two meals a day, wearing the most rudimentary clothing, sleeping on the floor. And yet I felt like a million bucks. I felt so happy. I didn't have any stress. 
I didn't have any anxiety. I was not running headlessly anywhere. I was not chasing anything. I was in my body, in my mind. I was enjoying this beautiful, resplendent sunset from Mother Nature. And I felt like a million bucks. I felt so happy. That was another a remarkable moment in my one of the, my meditations in Thailand. I also remember in partly in this was back in Kuala Lumpur when I did one of those retreats, 10 days retreats in Malaysia. That was in the middle of the rainforest, um, rubber plantation, so jungle. A lot of insects they were so noisy at night it was so scary because it was so dark and i did a very intense retreat during the 10 days and this is the remarkable thing about that retreat was with Tatmayandi Siado, which is one of the very um acclaimed achieved monks as well from burma is that i had so many questions in my mind that i wanted to ask him Lots of questions, lots and lots and lots of questions. I was, like, was going to ask him this and I was going to ask him that because we have an interview session with the monk every two days. So I was prepared to bombard him with thousands of questions. And why, when I came to his presence in his office to ask the questions, I had no more questions anymore. It was just this stillness. Just in his midst, in his presence, he must be a very accomplished monk, but he has this aura of peacefulness. It's like you're in the presence of this beloved grandfather. I had no more questions. I was just happy and content. And that was it. It's just clarity. And he asked me, he said, how much thoughts do you have in your mind? And I told him, like, sometimes there's just so much thoughts, they feel like raindrops, like heavy rains, like pitter patter, pitter patter. And it comes one after the other, or it's just like random, it's just so much thoughts. Then he said, that's really good. It's a really good sign. It's a really good sign that you're able to see all these sporadic thoughts. And he said, good job, good job, keep it up. And Tatamayandi Siado, the... When we go for his Dharma talks, he, he gives a, a talk every evening, is it feels like he is talking to you individually. The way he just, what he mentions in his talk, it seems like he's addressing every single one of your question that you have in your mind. And that is just, although there are like 200 over people in the hall, it's just to you that he's talking to. It's that miraculous and if you ask anyone else in the hall, they all feel the same way. It's that as if he's just talking to me. And, and this is when I realize I have come in the presence of, as they say, the Sama Sambodo. It's one of the qualities of the Buddha is that he is a great teacher. That he can be addressing a whole crowd, but he can almost mind read you and deliver the message in a way that it is delivered to the individual sitting there. It's just phenomenal. I've never come across this before, but in the presence of Tatmayandi Siado, I really got to experience a very accomplished, enlightened being in the presence of that enlightened being, the sheer amount of peace and amazing quality that he could teach the Dharma with such clarity and precision as if it's just tailored to you. It was uh, phenomenal phenomenal. And on the last day of the retreat, I was determined to attain enlightenment. Also, I was, you know, early 20s and very ambitious. So then I decided I'm not going to waste my time sleeping. I'm going to do walking meditation in the hall and practice until I cannot take it anymore and I have to sleep. So I was practicing walking meditation, and then it struck 11.30, and then bing, midnight. And then I felt suddenly very scared. I felt like I had these goosebumps all over my hands. And I felt, you know, there was some kind of foreign entity, dark entity that was looking at me. 
Okay, and so the the meditation hall is open with um, with the walls that are like this high, but not fully. Mm, and it's open to the forest. So then I felt the chills. I was like, whoa, I was like, there is something. Like, you just feel it. And I, what I did was I thought it, you know, so thought it in Burmese means you just call out for the higher being. So I called out to Tatamaya Di Siado. I just called him in my mind. I said, please come. Okay, like I need your protection. And there and then, the moment I said this, I saw a flash of red before my eyes. It's as if um, the Buddha's, the, the monk just walked past, you know, the, the robes. This is like the flesh of the ochre robes. <clears throat> I saw that in my vision. And then immediately I heard the sound of a car coming into the driveway. The moment the car came in with the headlights, that foreign entity was just gone in a flash. And it happened really fast, but then the, the sequence of events was just fear, call out to Tanmayadi Siado, saw the red light, the, the robes, and then the car driving in. It was amazing. I knew that, you know, in a meditation retreat, the, the monks are always blessing the temple grounds or the meditation hall before for the, the devotees, for the yogis who are meditating and i know they do that for a very good reason to repel and keep away all negative entities from entering into this sanctuary so yeah like before you do a meditation or um especially a meditation you want to just call out your higher angels spirit guides if you are buddhist the lord buddha or Lord Shiva, or Lord Ganesha for protection. And um, so that they protect your aura and then you do meditation. This is really, really a uh, very important advice. Yeah, super advice. <laughs> so that was an amazing um, encounter as well. So that I, I, got, I, I got a lot of discoveries about myself too and and overcoming fears and that was the overcoming the fear part part of it was in thailand you know with um, the pain body and then just mind over body and it the moment the mind decided i'm stronger than the body it snapped the pain was just gone it was quite strong um, in Burma, when I did, I did um, a 10 day retreat in Burma as well. Now, Burma is quite extreme because there's a lot of mosquitoes, thousands of mosquitoes, and they were like sucking the life hell out of me. I was like so itchy, and there were not mosquito nets everywhere. And then there were lots of like outdoor stands where you could sit under the tree and meditate, but still, mosquitoes were everywhere. And so then Jeff taught me, he said, just be still and don't scratch because the moment you scratch those bites and get itchier, you know? So what I did, I was scratching. I was reacting. Oh yeah. And I was like suffering from it. It's getting worse and worse. So then one day I sitting down and I decided I will be a tree. Then I decided really, it was just like an inspiration said, I will be a tree and I'm feeding my blood to these mosquitoes because they're like mama mosquitoes and they need it for their baby mosquitoes. It's an act of compassion and generosity. And the moment my mind played the role of the tree, strange, strange. I no longer felt, I felt the insect bites. I felt the insects, the, the, the initial sting of the mosquito, like a sharp needle and then gone because I wasn't reacting to it. and. I probably a million mosquitoes fed out of me, but I didn't scratch, so nothing happened, no reaction, no pain. And bliss, again, it was just, again, mind over body. And with that compassionate mindset too, very interesting. Also, I was deeply afraid of walking barefoot across the whole temple grounds because it was bare and it was the ground and, there are rocks and needles and thorns and whatever. And it was also at night, so I was afraid to walk barefoot alone at night. 
So I wanted a torch light, I wanted to wear shoes, and it was no shoes anywhere. So then I walked extremely slowly, mindfully, watching every single one of my steps, and I managed to go past the entire temple grounds at night, barefoot, nothing happened to me. And so that was a huge learning lesson for me as well, is that when you're afraid of the unknown and you're afraid of being hurt, is to just take a tiny step forward and be very mindful and you will be safe. You will be fine. That's a huge lesson from that retreat in Burma. And after the retreat in Burma, one of the um, remarkable dreams that I had was I saw this turtle, turtle man. He was a man, looked like a turtle, and he was looking very sad. He had this huge backpack full of things and he had this, you know, carriage um, and full of things. He looks like a beggar. Uh, somebody who was living out in the streets. And then each time he crossed the road, some ruffians or gangsters would come and take all his things away. And so I felt really sorry for this turtle man. So I woke up from the dream and I told my dad about it. And he said, look, it's because I've been meditating a lot. So my, my energy is very pure. And so sometimes, you know, some of the less fortunate beings <clears throat> in the less fortunate realms they happen to have a good karma to be able to reach out to you. And so therefore, they're giving you a dream so that you feel sorry for them and you can share your merit with them. And this is something that I, I learned directly is that when you have good karma, when you are in a good place, you have a good aura and you have accumulated good deeds, especially from a meditation retreat, is that you can share out this good, vibes, this good frequency with other beings, especially those who are less fortunate, and they can directly receive that um, currency, that which is your energy from you for their benefit so that they can transcend and move on to a higher life. So that's um, a direct dream that, yeah, you have also entities that's non-human who will connect with you and, uh, yeah, that you can help them directly because of the level of energy that you're coming from. So that's some of the interesting insights from meditation, but the day-to-day -day in the retreat center, it's, uh, it's not all bliss. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but I believe that if you're coming in with the right mindset, which is to discover more about yourself, to learn more about yourself, to be more intimately connected with you and not to have a competition with others or what others have felt or what others have realized. And it's just being in yourself and getting this opportunity to get to know you better, more intimately, that ultimately you're gonna discover how you operate inside of you. So then you take away these life lessons that support you <clears throat> for your life going forward. So when you're in a difficult situation or in a situation of fear or a painful situation like that you've never expected, you have that steady frame of mind that you can get immediately into that meditative mode. And that is what really does save me from a lot of hardships in life. And you just kind of learn how to surf the waves instead of just getting submerged in it and coming out of it, submerged in it. You just kind of like ride the waves and you learn the techniques to ride the waves. And that's part of the journey of meditation and the benefits truly. So with that, I wish you a beautiful day and uh, wishing you so much blessings wherever you are. And thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you like it so that, you know, this video can get to more people. And um, until we meet again, bye for now.